Hello everybody, it's Dr. Mikey Yu here. Welcome to another episode of My Autoimmune MD. Today, we're gonna to be talking about lupus. And there's this one particular study I wanna go over today. And this study goes over plant-based diets with lupus. And this was in the Journal of Lupus in 2022. So very recent, if you're watching in this year, 2022. For those of you that don't know, lupus is a systemic autoimmune disease that rheumatologists diagnose and treat. And lupus can essentially attack any organ of the body. So it can be pretty serious. And I've seen very mild cases to extreme um, severe cases in the ICU. So that's a bread and butter disease of rheumatology that I see almost every day. We have great medications for lupus, ranging from hydroxychloroquine to belumimab, also known as Benlista. But what about diet? Diet is so important and we need to talk about that and that's not talked about enough in rheumatology. So we're gonna be focusing on this um, study today. The name of the study is Plant-Based Dietary Changes May Improve Symptoms in Patients with Systemic Lupus Erythematosus. This was a study done out of the UK and in the Journal of Lupus. So, so diet does play a role in autoimmune disease and lupus. And they do briefly mention that unhealthy dietary patterns may contribute to the development and course of lupus. So they mention here as well that the overweight status has been associated with the presence of nutrient deficiencies and increased disease activity. And the reason why is because fat and adipose tissue is both hormonally active and immunologically active. And so if you have more fat in the body, you can have more inflammatory cytokines that are produced um, through the immune system. That's why it can increase disease activity when you have more adipose tissue. And you know how I talk about how the gut microbiome is very important to autoimmune disease, and in this case, lupus. Here they mentioned that unhealthy diets may lead to a disturbed gut microbiome and breach intestinal barrier, allowing undigested food proteins into the circulatory system and activating the immune response. So leaky gut um, and a breach intestinal barrier is pretty much the same thing. So that's why we want to eat a healthier diet, less processed food, less processed meat, more fruits and vegetables. So let's get on to how they did the study. So the way they did this study was an online survey. They actually used um, Survey Monkey. actually. It was around four weeks and they had 26 questions as noted here about the patient's experience um, with their eating habits and lupus symptoms. And this 26 question questionnaire um, was reviewed by nutritionists and rheumatologists um, in the UK. And here are some of the um, results of the questionnaire. So for example, um, when you're having a lupus flare, uh, you often feel the desire to, most people said they want to undereat. Some said they want to overeat. And um, some of them also said no change. And what would be a reason for you to change your eating habits? And most of them said they want to become healthier overall or improve their disease activity in lupus. And what is another reason um, that would prevent the patients from changing their eating habits? Most of them answer not enough information. And yeah, there is not enough information, but also I think there's too much information on the internet. You see all these different diets out there. Um, people, some people claiming to cure lupus, um, and there's also fat diets out there um, claiming different things. So there's too much information on the internet these days. Um, you have everyone saying something different. So it can be very confusing for people with lupus and autoimmune disease overall. So what was the general pattern of the response that had improvement um, with their lupus disease activity with the diet? So they say that majority, over 80% of the respondents um, that undertook new eating formats with increased vegetables and less processed food overall benefited from their dietary change. Vegetarians eating patterns provide the most self-reported benefits, 93% uh, benefited. So what kind of dietary food intake pattern led to um, the best improvement in disease activity in the lupus patients in the study? So they mentioned right here for you, I highlighted in yellow. The greatest decrease in symptom severity was provided by a low or no dairy 
intake, which led to a 27% decrease in disease activity. Low or no processed food, which is around 26%. And how about a vegan diet also, around 26% decrease in disease activity. And also the respondents who um, had a lower intake of gluten, uh, low or no sugar diet, and a minimal alcohol had also an improvement um, in their disease activity as well. So I think the last sentence here is very important um, and it can summarize um, a lot of the, what the study is trying to tell you. So it says, these findings suggest that although diverse dietary changes are associated with lupus patients feeling less symptomatic, eating formats involving more vegetables, and let me go down here, and fewer processed foods, carbohydrates, and animal products are more likely to be a benefit for patients. So I just want to bring your attention to this paper. Um, I think it's very important. We don't have too many studies in lupus on diets. And this was in a good journal, Journal of Lupus. And the overall theme here is more vegetables, um, less processed food, and there's many more graphs and bar um, charts that we can talk about, but um, it's going to be um, redundant here. So you guys can always pull up this paper, look on PubMed. Uh, the study, the title is Plant-Based Dietary Changes May Improve Symptoms in Patients with Systemic Lupus Erythematosus, Journal of Lupus, back in 2022, this year, while I'm talking, okay? Um, so thank you for joining me. We'll talk about more papers like this in the future and also focus on other topics such as environmental medicine, um, other diets, and um, supplements and other integrated medicine. We'll also talk about traditional medicine as well. I think that's very important. Um, it's not either or in healing patients. It's finding the right mix and whatever works for the patient. So it's a, I think it's a team effort with you and your doctor or whatever practitioner you're working with, okay? So thank you so much for joining me. Until next time.